Hello, and welcome to Radio Free Butte Hold. I'm your host, Bloody Doves, and today is both the inaugural episode of Radio Free Butte Hold, and also an episode where we're going to talk about the state of Battletech as a whole. But first, before we get into Battletech the franchise, we're going to talk about what is Radio Free Butte Hold? Who am I? Why am I gracing your your ears at this wonderful moment? And, you know, what is this podcast going to be about? So first of all, Radio Free Butte Hold is going to be a BT-focused podcast where they focus on fluff setting gameplay and you know product and content creation basically that's a long way of saying i'm going to talk about battletech i'm going to talk about battletech stuff and i'm going to talk about the video games i'm going to talk about the tabletop game i'm going to talk about the internal details of the setting i'm going to talk about people history mechs the whole nine yards and more than just that i'm going to be sure to give you kind of the the straight truth about what's going on you know, Battletech is a big franchise, and there's a lot of history that a lot of people maybe don't know, and we're going to be sure to talk about that history, and sometimes that history isn't going to be good, because Battletech has had some rough times in the past, and sometimes we're going to talk about things like some mistakes that the owners of Battletech have made, and some missteps the setting makes, and missteps the video, video games make, and so on and so forth. We're going to try to keep it positive, but we're also going to try to keep it honest. That's the deal. Who am I? Why am I doing this? I am Bloody Doves. I'm actually known in the Battletech community for a mod that I make for the Hairbrain Schemes 2018 game Battletech. You might know me from that mod. That mod is Battletech Advanced 3062, and we'll talk about that a little more later and maybe more in other episodes. You know, and why am I making this podcast? I'm making this podcast because I think right now is a good time for Battletech. Battletech is more alive than it's ever been. I've been playing since the early 2010s, and let me tell you what, when I got into Battletech, there was nothing. There were no video games other than MechWar Online, which was fine, but it wasn't really classic Battletech. There was no products on shelves. You, If you wanted to buy miniatures, you had to buy them from Iron Wind Metals, a company in southern Ohio, and you had to buy them for 15, 12 to $15 a pop, and they were made of pewter, and they were annoying to assemble, and they didn't look that great. Um... If you wanted to play Battletech, you had to draft your friends or already have a group that got you into it because there was no Battletech at game stores because Battletech was dead. As far as anyone was concerned, Battletech was a shambling corpse. Uh, most game stores didn't think it was around. Most game stores didn't think it was alive. And so you just couldn't play it. If you wanted to play, you went to a convention or you played with your buddies and that was all you did. Fast forward 10 years to now in 2023... And Battletech is alive in a way that I've never seen before, and I have friends who even say, yeah, wow, Battletech is way more alive than I thought it was, than I've ever seen it, even going back to the early 2000s. You know, it's, it's anecdotal, but I went to my local game store recently, I was there on a Sunday just to pick something up for Magic the Gathering, actually, and I decided to look in the back, see who's playing games, and I saw people playing Battletech, and I'm like, there's a lot of people here, there's like 18 people here, I counted them, uh, and I went and talked to one of, one of the groups, and I'm like, how, many, how long have people been playing Battletech here? This is wild. And they said, oh yeah, we've been playing for like a couple of months. We, you know, got a got a group that organizes on the, the game store's Discord server, and, you know, we just come and play, and it's a big group of people. I'm like, wow. And I counted again, and it was like 18 some odd people, and I'm like, that's a lot of folks. I've never seen 18 Battletech players in a room outside of a convention like Gen Con or Origins Game Fair. It just doesn't happen. But it happens now. And that right there tells me everything I need to know about how good... Battletech has it right now. It's just wild to me that Battletech is so alive. And I feel like now is a good time to talk about it. To explore Battletech, to share to share my history and experience with people, and to share stories from the older days for a lot of new players who maybe don't know those older stories. So we're gonna talk about some of that too. So that's about, that's what Radio Free Butte Hold is, and that's what we're going to talk about. In today's episode, we're going to discuss the state of the franchise as a whole. We're going to talk about the tabletop game, we're going to talk about the video games, of which there are three and a half, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. And we might also mention, you know, my opinion on the state of the franchise and where it's going. But, you know, that'll be at the end. So, let's start with the tabletop game. For those of you who don't know, Tabletop Battletech is managed by a company named Catalyst Game Labs. Catalyst Game Labs has the license, though they don't own it. The license is actually owned by a company named Fanatics, who bought the previous license holder, which was a company named Tops, who makes baseball cards, and some other stuff, but mostly baseball cards. 
Uh, and Topps got the license from, I want to say, WizKids when they bought WizKids in the 2000s, the early 2000s, and then WizKids inherited it from FASA, who actually founded Battletech back in the 80s. Uh, Battletech's first release was Battle Droids in 1984. So, Battletech's had a long history. It's almost 40 years old. And the current license holder, the current executors of the license, if you will, uh, are Catalyst Game Labs. Catalyst is a complicated company with a lot of history, and some of it not so good. And we're going to talk about that another time. It's a little outside of the scope of what I want to talk about today. But trust me, we will talk about it, because I think it's worth knowing. And there's a reason why a lot of old-timers look at Catalyst with some suspicion. Because they kind of earned that reputation. But we'll talk about that another time. Well, right now, though, Catalyst is doing good. I'll, I'll give them credit. Catalyst is managing things well, for the most part. And they're, they're doing a good job. And I like that. I like the Catalyst is, you know, going places. You know, there's no more evidence of this than the Kickstarters that they've been running. In 2018 or 2019, they ran the Clan Invasion Kickstarter, which put all the Battletech product in stores now was basically... From that Kickstarter, and that Kickstarter got it all, got it all running. Kickstarter made a good amount of money. I don't remember how much offhand, uh, but it made a pretty decent clip, and it kind of got the game running again. And then just this month, they fin- they wrapped up the initial phase of the Mercenaries Kickstarter. The Mercenaries Kickstarter made seven point five million dollars, and is one of the I think that one of the top forty Kickstarters on the platform of all time. Which is just wild. Uh, it is a ridiculous amount of money, and it's wild to me to think that there's enough love for Battletech to put that amount of cash into it. That's pretty crazy. A lot of games can't say that. I mean, a lot of really big games can't say that. There are video games that have been made from Kickstarter that made less money than that. It's pretty crazy, uh, but I'm happy to see it. You know. Opinions about the models themselves aside, I think some of them are okay, some of them are great, some of them are not so great. Cough, cough, I'm looking at you, Enforcer. I'm looking at you, Enforcer. Uh, I think a lot of the minis, you know, are okay and decent, but setting aside that, there's clearly a fire for the franchise and a passion for the franchise that I am all too happy to see. I am more than happy to see new players going, wow, I can actually get plastic minis for the first time ever, and they look kind of pretty good uh and that's the thing battletech has never really had battletech has never had that easily accessible here you want to buy battletech here's a box set go because all the old box sets haven't been available in like a decade (laughs) uh you know the box sets now are available they're on shelves soon there's going to be a box set named battletech essentials at target which i don't think has ever happened before i don't think battletech's ever been that mainstream before and spoilers alert i'm going to be getting a box set of that because it's got the uh yenlo wang and it's got the legend killer which are both famous solaris designs the yenlo wang is a centurion and the legend killer is my probably favorite mech in battletech it's a right it's a rifleman 3n with a wonderful history maybe i'll talk about that some other time too but like battletech I mean, there's, there's a passion for it. There's a community for it. And I'm happy to see that. And Catalyst is shepherding that well. Catalyst also, in addition to making miniatures, also manages the storyline of Battletech and the official story and the, the canon of the setting. A full discussion of the current state of the timeline is a huge conversation and well outside the scope of today. But we can shorten it to the current year is 3151 or 52 i think it's 52 as of dominions divided which is the most recent book uh basically clan wolf has conquered terra has defeated the republic of the sphere which has been dissolved and alaric wolf the con of clan wolf has founded a new star league uh, under his guidance and that's about all we know (laughs) the recent books have been dealing with the fallout from that event and the other great houses and great powers around the inner sphere and what they're all doing so the details of what's going on with alaric's new empire is actually not very well known yet and i think that's what the next book is going to be about the next book i believe is called ilkhan eyes only that's what i saw in a press release from catalyst that i looked at earlier today and we don't have any details on that book but i believe that book is going to be about what's going on on terra and what alaric is doing to encourage his new empire so that's exciting again you know it's exciting because there was a long time where battletech just 
didn't have plot advancement because there were no products coming out. I, you know, it's annoying to go back to that again, but it's true. You know, in the 2010s, there was no advancement. We were just in the Dark Age. Literally, the, the era was called the Dark Age. And that was it. What was going on? Don't know. Nobody knows. No, there's no product talking about it because there's no products at all. So it's nice to have some some product, some you know, timeline advancement and some storyline happening again. And I would like to see a lot more of that. To me, it's divided was an okay book. I'm hoping Ilkhan Eyes Only is a little more interesting. We'll see. Here's hoping. You know, some of the recent books like Tamar Rising were pretty good. Empire Alone was kind of there. Dominion's Divided was kind of there. But we'll, I'm hoping for more books. I'm hoping for more story content. And I think the truth is we're going to get more of it. So, something to look forward to. So, Tabletop's in a, in a decent place. You know, we've got the storyline advancing. We've got miniatures coming out. We've got a passion for the, the franchise. This is good. And that segues us into the video games. So, this is the area I know a little more about because my day job is actually in the Battletech video games, if you can believe it. You know, for my money, there are three and a half video games we're talking about right now. There's MechWarrior Online, there's MechWarrior 5, there's uh, Battletech, the 2018 Hairbrain Schemes game, and then there is rumored MechWarrior 6. We'll start with the one that makes me a little sad, which is MechWarrior Online. Now, full context, when I started getting into Battletech, when my buddies dragged me into it in the early 2010s, I went looking for a Battletech game I could play when we weren't playing, you know, um, you know, at their apartment. I went looking for a Battletech game I could play on my computer, just in my own time, and the only one available was MechWare Online. And MechWare Online was fine. It was fine. I had fun. But even then, MechWare Online was kind of, you know, it was it was okay. It wasn't really my jam, but the game was, you know, it was alright. And since then, the game has just kind of gone downhill uh it's lost population pgi neglected it pgi is the company that makes it piranha games inc pgi kind of neglected it for a while and just sort of let it meander along for a few years without any real direction or anything going on now in the last year or so mech War online has gotten content again it's got it got a new mech last year the crusader the first one since the dervish in i think 2019 uh, it's getting another new mech this year, the Stone Rhino, which is coming out in July. It looks pretty good, I'll be honest. The Stone Rhino looks pretty nice. Uh, we haven't seen in-game shots. We've seen, you know, the concept arts, and it looks real good. Uh, the artist did a really great job. He's a he's also a good dude, I know him. His name is uh, Alex Inglacius, also known as Flying Debris. He's a cool guy. Talk with him on Discord sometimes. Um, you know... It's getting new content. Supposedly there's going to be a new map sometime this year. I think in the next couple of months that's supposed to come out. I tried looking for details. I couldn't find any. So I don't know if they've said a whole lot about that map. But supposedly one is coming. They've had some map changes over the last handful of patches. They've had a lot of balance changes over the last year. And so, like, it's still alive. It does make me a little sad to see it kind of diminished, though. I think it's a good game. And it's got a very dedicated community. You can find people like... Phil over at NGNG playing, uh, Magic Pain Glove over on Twitch, he plays still a bunch. The Beef occasionally still fires it up. Uh, there's a bunch of other streamers, you know, more than I could name in a quick sentence, that still play Mech War Online and still care. And I'd like to see more content and more support for it. I hope PGI finds the time and energy to keep the game alive. I question that, though, because we're going to talk about MechWarrior 5 and MechWarrior 6 now, which I think is eating a lot of Piranha's time. So Piranha also released MechWarrior 5, mm, I want to say a year and a half ago, two years ago. I think it's two years ago now. Uh, it was originally released on Epic Game Store, so I had to wait a year to buy it because when it came to Steam. Uh, MechWarrior 5 is a single-player co-op experience with you and up to three friends where you take the role of a MechWarrior uh, who's in command of a MechWarrior company and you sort of just fly around doing MechWarrior stuff. There is a plot. It's not great. But there is one, if you want to play it. Uh, but really, you just fly around and you do contracts and you shoot dudes in mechs. And honestly, it's fun. Uh, MechWarrior 5 is a fun game. MechWarrior 5 is also... It's okay. It's fine. The last DLC it got was Rise of Rasselhog, which was in January of this year. That was its fourth DLC. Uh, I don't remember all of the previous ones. There's Call to Arms, Here's the Inner Sphere, Rise of Rasselhog, and one I can never remember. Sorry. Mea culpa PGI. Can't remember your last DLC. 
There's been no word about further patches or updates or DLC since then that I could find, no official word. And I think the reality is there will be no more. And we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, however, the game is currently being kind of kept alive by the modding community. There's a there's a fairly robust modding community for it. There's a number of major mods, really two worth really mentioning. Uh, there are some smaller ones, and there are individual mod creators who are making a lot of cool like new mechs and things. Uh, I've seen uh, there's, a, there's a couple of mod creators adding new mechs like the Argus, the Hollander. Uh, there's someone who's added a bunch of clan mechs. You know, a lot of cool stuff. But the two major mods worth talking about are yet another mech lab, also known as YAML, and Merc Tech. These are full-throated overhauls that really adjust the entire the entire uh, mech bay and a lot of the gameplay and that sort of thing. YAML is kind of a, a family of mods. Merc Tech is kind of a self-contained super overhaul. Uh, they're both still in active development, at least to a degree. Uh, YAML doesn't seem to be in super active, but the sub mods still get updates. And, you know, it's still going. And it's a good one. I usually play with YAML when I play. Merc Tech is in active development. Progress seems steady, but full releases seem relatively sparing, at least from what I could see. However, uh, the dev of Merc Tech, a Magnum, uh, did post an update literally yesterday as a recording, so uh, May 23rd, 2023. Uh, that he labeled Update 27, which he said is going to be, hopefully, the last update before he could release an unstable patch, an unstable release of Merc Tech for people to playtest on their home computers, which is pretty exciting. He didn't say when that that unstable release will happen, but he said soon. So, hopefully, if you've been waiting on Merc Tech to update, that update is coming shortly. Pretty exciting. Good stuff. Looking forward to that. Um, now, going back to MechWarrior 5 official content, the reason I think there is going to be no official content going forward for MechWarrior 5 is because we know from Russ Bullock, the head of PGI, in an interview he stated that Piranha Games is working on another single-player co-op MechWarrior-esque experience right now. We also know from, I think, the same interview that they're not planning on adding clans into... MechWarrior 5. I think we can read between the lines here and intuit that MechWarrior 6 is on the horizon. And that it's probably going to be clan focused. One of the big requests the community has had since the release of MechWarrior 5 is please add clans, we want clans, clans are great, we would love more clans, please add the clans to MechWarrior 5. Which is, you know, a fair request. But it's not going to happen because it's going to be its own game. So, MechWarrior 6. Not officially announced. Very speculative on my part. But I think we can fairly easily intuit between the lines here and see that MechWarrior 6 is is on the horizon. Which, that'll be fun. I'm looking forward to a clan-centric game. We haven't had one of those since, oh boy, MechWarrior 2? Or MechWarrior 3. I can't remember which one was clan-focused, but one of them was. So, that'll be pretty exciting. Looking forward to that when PGI gets around to it. Now, the last video game, and the one I know the most about, is the 2018 Hairbrain Schemes game Battletech, it's a, which is a single-player, turn-based tactical combat experience where you control a lance of mechs and you sort of stomp around the battlefield and, you know, take missions and do your thing. There's a, up, there's a story. It's actually pretty decent. It introduces the Oregon Coalition, which is a new faction, uh, kind of in the southern periphery next to the Touring Concordat, and it's set in 3025. Cool game. If you haven't played it, go check it out. Now, that game stopped getting official updates like four years ago. <laughs> the studio delivered three DLCs, uh, Flashpoint, Urban Warfare, and Heavy Metal, and then they went off to make a different game, which has been announced. That new game from Hairbane Schemes is called The Lamplighters League and The Tower at the End of the World. It is not Battletech related, so I won't be covering it here on Radio Free Butte Hold, but I'll probably be covering it a little bit on Twitch, and we'll talk about it when it comes out. They're currently in like press mode for it and they are revealing characters and gameplay and so i think we're pretty close to seeing that release probably in the next few months if i had to make a guess but they haven't released a official release date but i think we're close to seeing it come out anyway Hairbrain's game says not making battletech anymore they moved on and so 
the game has really fallen into the hands of the modding community, which has a very good, lively modding community. And there's actually five major mods I want to talk about. There are some smaller modders kind of on the sides doing their own thing, but there's five major mod packs that I'd like to discuss. They are Rogue Tech, Baltic Advanced 3062, Baltic Extended Commander's Edition, Hades Rim, and Expanded Arsenal. Each of these takes a different approach to modding the game and is good in its own right and well worth playing if you're interested. Uh, one of the great things about the, the modding scene is that we all kind of talk to each other and we all kind of help each other. And so there's not a sense of competition for players. All the mods are good. They're all worth playing. You should check out any one of them. So we'll go through them real quick just in case you're not familiar. Rogue Tech is the biggest and the oldest. Um, originally founded by Lady Electo and shortly after the game's release, I think like within a month or two. Rogue Tech is a full-throated overhaul that changes virtually everything about the base game with a focus on high difficulty and massive, massive amounts of player choice. There is so much to do and so much to see and so much that you can do in Rogue Tech that it's kind of beyond description. Uh, like, I could spend all week talking about it and probably still not get everything. And you can ask the RT devs what you can do in Rogue Tech and they will just forget stuff that they can do because there's so much. It's pretty amazing. It's also quite hard uh, and moderately punishing by design. That's where the rogue in the name comes from, from roguelikes. Uh, and that was the intent going in. Still, great mod, good friends. Definitely recommend it. Their last update seems to have been right at the end of last month, and I know that it's still in development, so there's plenty more to come. BTA 3062, about to advanced, is my mod. Uh, it's my day job, actually. I... I uh, am the primary developer of BTA 3062, and thanks to patrons on Patreon, which there will be a link in the description, uh, people are good enough to support me uh, and support the creation of BTA, enough that it's my day-to-day -day income. Uh, BTA is, another, again, a, another major mod pack that changes pretty much everything about the base game, but where Rogue Tech focuses on high difficulty, I focus much more on player choice and player balance. So BTA offers a similarly vast array of choices for the player, but I focus a lot more on, on very, very tight balancing and very good balancing to make sure that every aspect of the game is available to players and is also fun for players. And there are no really terrible strategies and there are no really serious trap choices where you can go, I would like to make machine guns a thing. And you know what? You can, and they're pretty good, and you can have fun and succeed doing it. Uh, it's not a perfect balance, because nothing is, but it's pretty close, and I think that you could spend a lot of time with BTA and never run out of things to do. The third major mod pack is Abaltic Extended Commander's Edition. This is developed by Hari78. Uh, Hari and Baltic Extended are a, Baltic Extended is a major mod pack. It's a very good one, but it's much more of a bridge between vanilla and Rogue Tech and BTA. Rogue Tech and BTA like change the entire mech bay and bring it much more close to tabletop. Baltic Extended does not. It's much more vanilla-ish in that way, but also includes things like the clans and the full map and some new flashpoints. And it's a it's a big content patch, but it's a gameplay patch. But it's also closer to vanilla. Um. Be uh, Bex's last major update, as far as I can tell, was from 2022, so I'm not sure that Hari is still doing heavy development on it, but I did see uh, on his Discord server he was helping someone with an installation issue, literally today. So, he's still around. He might be doing stuff. I'm not actually certain. Hari, if you're out there and you're listening, maybe let me know what you're up to so I can make sure other people know what you're up to, too. Uh, there you go. The two smaller mod packs I want to discuss are Hades Rim and Expanded Arsenal. These are both much smaller, much more focused experiences, and they're much more vanilla-centric. And that they make no major game... They don't really make, you know, gameplay system changes, and they don't really make um, major balance adjustments. Uh, Hades Rim is created by Hobbs. Uh, Hobbs has focused Hades Rim as a story-focused experience, where it has a good... I don't know, 40 some odd flashpoints in it that he's made that tell an entire new series of campaigns. Uh, it's actually pretty wild. Um, it's, I think, the most flashpoints in any project in the community at all. The last update for Hades Rim appears to be from March 17th of this year, so he's still going. I don't think he's done with the flashpoints he wants to, to uh, and the stories he wants to tell, so there should be more to come from that. 
The last one is Expanded Arsenal. Expanded Arsenal has had a few different names and passed through a few different hands. Right now, it's currently maintained by Hangui. This is a smaller mod pack that's vanilla friendly. It's the only mod pack here, I think, that can just use a vanilla save. The rest of them, I think, all require a new save. Uh, and Expanded Arsenal is just about adding raw content. You know, here's just more weapons, more mechs, you know, more stuff to do. More stuff to play with. Uh, more guns, more weapons, more mechs, more gear. Uh, which is fun. Uh, it doesn't, as far as I can tell, focus a lot on heavy gameplay changes or heavy balancing. It's just kind of a, here's a lot of fun stuff, go nuts. Uh, the last update from Hungui was from this month, it was from the 16th. And as far as I can tell, it included things like land air mechs and super heavy mechs, which is pretty exciting. So, go check out any of those five projects, they're all great projects, definitely check them all out. And that kind of covers the tabletop games and the video games. You know... There's more we can talk about, such as the fact that there's a, a healthy amount of YouTube and Twitch content. The Battletech content of all three of these games is available on Twitch pretty much all the time. In small numbers, but in pretty much all the time. Uh, and there's plenty of YouTube content you can go hit up. A few major creators I can name off the top of my head would be Tex of the Black Pants Legion, who makes very good long-form drama type content where he goes over one topic in extraordinary depth. Uh, Tex is also a good dude. I've talked to him personally. He's quite nice. Um, there's Mechanical Frog, who does shorter form, kind of story-focused content, uh, which is really cool. Mech Frog is also a really nice guy. He's he's a cool guy worth checking out. And then there's also Big Red 40 Tech, who makes kind of somewhere in the middle between those two. Uh, he makes, you know, again, pretty cool, pretty cool content. I think his current project is a major video about the Stone Rhino. I think he said it's going to be like four hours long, which is pretty nuts but i mean sounds like it's gonna be a hell of a video so godspeed big red um i'll put links to all of their content on youtube down below <clears throat> so definitely check them out uh they're cool dudes and there's a whole bunch of there's a whole slew of smaller creators that i just don't have the time to name and i frankly don't even know them all uh but there's a whole bunch of smaller creators there's battletech content on on youtube which is just another sign the community is alive and well and i could not be happier to see it and so, you know, that brings us back to the state of the franchise. You know, where is Battletech today? You know, despite a few things that I'm curious about, some possible missteps, uh, I think that Battletech looks good. Battletech looks healthy. Healthier than I've ever seen it to be. And I've been playing since, like, 2012 or 2011. Not a long time in the grand scheme, but long enough that I remember a time when Battletech was a lot worse off than this. Uh, you know... The tabletop is more alive than I've ever seen it. The video games are all still active and they have dedicated communities keeping them going. You know, Battletech's not the biggest franchise ever, but I think that's actually a good thing. I think that it being a little smaller with a much more dedicated community is better than it being huge with a much more transient community. You know, I love that there's, that there's so much passion in the community and there's so many people making cool content and cool stuff. And I think that's just a great thing for everyone. So, I'm happy to see it. You know, I do have a couple minor concerns. We'll go into them another time, maybe. But I think that right now, things are good. Things are good. It's a good time for Battletech. It's a good time to be a Battletech fan. And I hope you guys will stick with me while I talk about it more, explore it more, and share more of it with you. And that's all for Radio Free Butthole today. Uh, I've been Bloody Doves. This has been Radio Free Butthole's first episode. And remember, live free, ride hard, and never trust Comstar Mech Warriors. Goodbye. <laughs>